Okay, so for this one, I've been doing every song, it seems like, off of um, Chapel Rome's The Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess. This one I decided to do is more of a tutorial because the song's kind of repetitive. And it's also open to interpretation because there's not a lot of real clear guitar on the original. But when you watch the Bonnaroo 2024 performance, her guitarist adds a lot more guitar. So I'm going to show you how I would do that. And then we'll talk about one part of the song that's like kind of tricky. <laughs> So it's basically a uh, four chord progression. Turn it down a little bit. So if we got part, I can just play like the bass notes of the four chords. So it's A. Six string, fifth string. And then C sharp, fifth string, fourth fret. This is the interesting chord because it's a flat seven in the key of A major, G, sixth string, third fret, and then finally to fifth string, fifth fret for D. So let's rewind that and kind of do it along with the record here, and then we'll switch the chords. I saw her guitarist get Bonnaroo doing, playing the bar chord. So again, this is the A bar chord, click fret, C sharp minor bar chord, ninth fret, and then the surprise G, and then D over here in the fifth fret. And then for the chorus, we just turn the distortion on, and use the bottom parts of those chords, bottom three strings, and we'll have a more powerful chorus. Jealous, but my kink is watching you. So I guess you crew the whole song except for this one weird part. I was finding the weird part because it's breakdown towards the end. Right before that, there's a place where the G chord gets held longer. Let's check that out. Extra G. So here's the, the strange part. So it starts with this little guitar part, which is middle two strings, sixth fret, both notes. I think it's gonna slide up to 11 and then 9. So let's play that, okay. But the, this next time is when it gets weird because it sounds like in the studio the guitarist is still playing that part but they start fading other chords over top of it in kind of an awkward way. So. Because if you listen, there's a C chord in there which kind of doesn't really belong over top of a progression with C sharp in it. Because it was like. So it seems like it goes. on A before going back to the usual thing, but it's the fade out of the as it goes into it. It's so annoying. Um, let's listen to the bottom room version of that. And here's the, uh, the big long extra G. The extra G. Which lets you know you're coming up on that part. Mm -hmm. 
they could add some reps here too. Okay, yeah, so when you listen to your guitar, this helps a lot. Because you can hear the guitar coming on, um, I think actually maybe the bass player or something that was playing out there, and then the guitar comes in on really strange C. So if I was going to do this in a live band, that's how I'd do it. I mean, if her live band solved the problem that way, that's how you should do it, right? So, so here's those extra little transitional. So there you go, that's how I would approach playing that whole song based on those two versions. Thanks for watching.